Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Merrick's Garage. Today it is the Rubicon recap. I'm gonna be going through the truck, telling you guys what worked, showing you what didn't, and giving you a, a recap roundup of the whole week's activities. It was a fantastic trip. I've got a lot to share with you guys, so let's get straight to it. If this is your first time to my channel, I wanna say thank you for stopping by my little corner of the internet. This is my K5 Blazer behind me that I call the K30 Blazer. I've been building it for about six years and documenting pretty much everything on this channel. If you are a fan of fabrication, four-wheeling, family trips, camping, and sometimes failure, you are in the right place. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Give me a follow. Hit that little bell thing. And let's go get it. Merrick's Garage. What can I say about the Rubicon Trail that you guys don't already know? It is probably the world's most famous four-wheel drive trail, and it has a reputation as being pretty gnarly. And let me just tell you, that reputation is deserved. It is a long, punishing trail. It's in beautiful country, it's an amazing challenge, and it is 100% worthwhile your time getting out there and trying to take it on. I rallied the truck up there last Sunday, drove it all the way up, camped right on the trailhead, pushed out the next morning, spent three days on the trail, and then turned a big loop around through Mammoth and the Eastern Sierras with some camping thrown in back in the Eastern Slope of the Sierras. It was fantastic. Got to meet some new guys, got to hang out with some old friends, and I got to throw some new dents on the truck. So let's break it down as to exactly what worked and what didn't. And I'll let you guys know what I'm gonna be fixing in the weeks coming up. While this obviously isn't my first time off-road in the K30 Blazer, it is the first time going on a substantial long trail like the Rubicon. I've done many, many day trips, but to go on a multi-day trip when you're gonna be effectively two days away from any sort of assistance, requires you have your ducks in a row. Uh, in my case, I wanted to make sure that everything was performing flawlessly. I did not want to be that guy on the trail, holding up everyone, clogging the trail because I've got a, a broken power steering pump or my battery fell out or whatever it might be. So the last few weeks you guys will have seen, I've been feverishly preparing the truck for this trip and it passed with flying colors. I did have a, um, a variety of issues up here, but that's to be expected. That's why I do these trips, is to shake loose weaknesses so I can come back, polish them out a little bit, go do another trip and see what else rears its head. So let's get into what worked and what didn't. Most of the body protection that I have been adding to the K30 Blazer for years paid its dues this week with lots of uh, rock damage, but that's what they were built for. The rock sliders definitely took a beating, but once again, this is their sole purpose, is to keep the truck up out of the rocks. You may notice that the vinyl wrap is missing. Well, it was pretty tired and pretty haggard, and so I took this opportunity to peel it all off. I'm gonna prep and paint this and bring it back to Another vinyl wrap. I'm thinking of sticking with the, with the camo theme, but moving away from the digicam. So any suggestions? If you guys have something cool that I should be taking a look at for a vinyl wrap, let me know. But uh, right now the plan is to bring this guy down to metal, fix as much stuff as I can, throw some paint on it and primer, sand it down, and then hit it with a wrap again. I have already started on this side of the truck. This side took a little bit of damage on a squeeze tree coming into Rubicon Springs. This is just rubbing from the tree. I've actually been able to pop it out quite a bit, but a little bit of body filler and you know, you'll never notice it. Same thing down here, some more rubbing from trees. Not that big of a deal. You can see that the sliders over here put in a lot of work. The rear bumper too, happy to say that despite my uh, reservations about how the rear bumper would hold up, it did fantastic. These guys never got caught once. In fact, they would nerf me off rocks 
quite a bit. Underneath, we took some hits, but that's the whole point. The underside of the truck was all armored and I wasn't particularly worried about anything happening there. But to see this bumper that I've spent so long working on, doing its job and doing it well, was really, really cool to see. I had an idea of what I wanted for uh, the rear body protection of the truck, but having an idea and getting it in the flesh are two very, very different things. And I am beyond stoked. The bumper fended off everything. The skid plate was perfect. The wrap bars didn't get hung up. Super stoked on that. Very glad to report that that worked well. Well, we know what worked. So let's talk briefly about what didn't work. My fuel cell needs to be sealed properly. I have been having nothing but issues with the sealing that I've done on the fuel cell. Now that's fully on me. I am, I'm building amounts for the pump and for the fuel filler and most likely now for the fuel level sensor. And they leak when the tank is full, they will seep out the top and it will leak quite badly to the point where I'm giving people a headache on the trail. Now, this is a major problem. This is not only a fire hazard, but it's an environmental problem. And let's be honest, it decreases my fuel efficiency dramatically. So that is high on my list, is addressing my fueling issues. The truck did fine, never ran out of gas, made it all the way through with one tank, didn't have to fill up, but the constant drip, drip, drip out of the back of the tank was very, very aggravating. So that's high on the list. As I mentioned earlier, the engine did fantastic. These are the areas that I need to be addressing. I obviously need to build a decent mount right here. This is, is not cutting it. My master cylinder or my master cylinder to booster interface is leaking and as a result has dropped quite a bit of fluid all over the place. You can see that down there from where it's been leaking. It may be time to fully address my braking situation. I have a new master cylinder. That is the factory booster. It's the half ton booster that came with the K5 Blazer. I'm running rear disc. I've got disc up front. I've replaced proportioning valves. I've replaced all the lines, but I am still running the stock booster. It's a vacuum boost. It's not a hydraulic assist. And it may have been a little outgunned on some of the trail. Um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly why it was leaking and why I was losing fluid. The brakes never failed me. They never got soft. I never had any concerns about that. But it is one of those areas where I was definitely pushing the brakes past their um, operating environment. And as a result, they puked fluid that I had to add at the end of the day. So that is on my list of things to address. But the biggest issue was my steering. Yeah, that is ugly. That is a broken U-joint on the CV for the shaft that goes down to my box. You can see that to get to the steering box from the column, my intermediate shaft has to make a rather dramatic change of direction. The angle that I'm running that shaft on is putting a lot of load on the U-joints and on the first day, it popped the caps off the U-joints. The U-joint remained captured in the yoke, but the caps were no longer there and so I had quite a lot of slop in the steering. Knowing that it was captured and not going anywhere didn't bring me really much concern, but I was aware that, heck, if I broke one of the one of the yokes or one of the arms off of that U-joint or broke the ear off that yoke, I was gonna be in a world of hurt because that is not an easy fix. So my steering, especially the steering on the intermediate shaft is high on my list of things to address. It needs to be safe, it needs to be reliable, it needs to be smooth, it needs to have no binding. And I have a whole lot of packaging considerations to figure out how I'm gonna make it work. With the bump stop and the coil over and everything in the way, it's never gonna be a straight shot. So I need to do some thinking and some planning and possibly some garage engineering to make this thing as reliable as the rest of the truck. Although the drivability and handling of the truck is stellar. I mean, I did drive it for eight hours on the freeway the other day. 
it does need some uh, attention and handling department. Part of that is I still have yet to do any tuning on the coilovers. The shocks are completely stock. The springs are what I calculated. And while I think they're pretty close, they may need some work, but the valving on my coilovers definitely needs to be addressed. It is, uh, it feels to be rather linear, meaning that through the travel, through the path of the coilover, it doesn't seem to stiffen up towards the end as you would like, and my small bump compliance or low speed dampening is non-existent. So a lot of that can be adjusted with tire pressure for the low speed stuff, but being able to give the truck a more supple, comfortable ride over that low frequency, uh, just road rubble and basic noise would be great. Getting a valving job done, getting some suspension tuning is high on the list, as is a front sway bar. The rear sway has taken out a lot of the wandering from the rear end, a front sway would tie it all together. So front sway bar, some tuning on the suspension, and I think I am gonna have a Canyon Carver on my hands. As it should be, the main thrust of my focus and energies has been on the powertrain, on the frame, on the suspension of the K30 Blazer. I'm not gonna say I've neglected the body, but it has not been high on the list of priorities. Heck, I've rolled this thing twice. I've dragged it through countless bushes and uh, pinstriping events. And it's time to bring it back to a, a more appealing appearance. There's a ton of dents, there's a ton of scratches and scrapes, but the vast majority of that is going to be replaced. The front clip is entirely worn out. The core support is sagging. The fenders are pretty smashed. There is a lot of, uh, well, you can see it right there, how uneven it is. That is some significant body gap right there. Not to mention this fender has seen better days. And the roof is in bad shape. I have all new body paneling to replace and put on. I've got a new cab to cut and install. And that's probably gonna be my big winter project this year. I hope you guys liked that Rubicon roundup. The truck did awesome. The crew that I went with was great. The weather was amazing. And the trip was a massive success really fired up on where the truck is right now. Yeah, I got some little stuff to fix, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it a hobby, a passion, and a pastime. If you guys have not checked out my website, go ahead and take a look at merricksgarage.com. It's where I got all my swag, like stickers and shirts and hats, the purchase of which always goes directly back to this channel to help with the uh, purchase of equipment and parts and gas and camera stuff and all the other ancillary costs that go into bringing you this content every week. So head over there, take a look at it. Also check out my Amazon store. That is linked down below. It's basically got all the tools, parts, paints, disposables, everything that I use on the build will be linked in that store down below. And it can be a good resource if you're looking for parts for, I don't know, a brake rebuild. I usually list everything in there. Anyway, enough about that. The Rubicon video is going to be coming out. I've got so much video to sort through. I also paid attention to what you guys were asking for. You wanted more detail on the obstacles, more overall detail on the trail, uh, pictures and video of the surrounding areas and detail on the truck. I, I paid attention and I got you guys all that. I'm thinking at this point, it's probably gonna be at least three videos, maybe four. There really is that much stuff to go through. It's gonna be good. It was beautiful. It was an amazing trip and it was a blast. I have a bunch of other videos. If you guys haven't seen all of my videos, take a look at this one up here. It's a favorite of mine. I think you guys will dig it. And we'll see you next week. Merrick's Garage.